हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द कोर्स ऑन ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम दिस इज ए काजी फैकल्टी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सी एस सी आई एम एल एंड डी एस के आई टी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग टू बिगिन विथ फर्स्ट वी विल हैव अ लुक इन टू वॉट इज ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम वॉट आर द एसेंशियल्स रिलेटेड टू ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम so the lesson 1 begins with operating system structure the objectives of this particular discussions are to provide to know the major operating system components and also know the details of a basic computer system organization so what is an operating system or how do we define an operating system basically an operating system is a program that acts as an intermediary between a user of a computer and the computer hardware uh, we can also say it as an interface between the hardware and a user as we all know that the hardware of a computer will understand in terms of ones and zeros whereas a user when he or she will enter the information uh, will be in a language that is understood by a user so there has to be an interpretation or an interface where a user's requirement or user's information or a user's task will be interpreted by the hardware of a computer this is facilitated by an operating system now what are the goals of operating system one is to execute user programs and make solving user problems easier so as said any user program should be executed then only the result is obtained hence to address and complete the task of a user operating system facilitates next the interface of operating system should be convenient to use once the user is doing his task or multiple tasks they should be completed on time there should not be much delay whatever may be the type of the task that a user is executing on the computer that should be completed on time next goal of operating system is to use or efficiently use the computer hardware which is a important goal as the computer hardware comes with limited or some uh, defined specification the operating system cannot keep on engaging the hardware resources for a long time it should complete one task then switch on to the next task this is how a user's work can be completed or a user's program can be executed so these three are the primary operating system goals now what is a computer system structure or what does a computer system consists of so it consists of hardware cpu which again has a memory connected io devices io refer to input output devices then the operating system itself is also one of the component then there are control mechanisms between the users and the application then there are application programs 
then some of the application programs which a day to a day to day user uses for just an example purpose given here are word processors say web browsers compilers uh, then maybe games access to a database system etc so any application that is being run on a computer over the operating system also forms a component of computer system this diagram just gives an overview of how the hierarchy of the components in a computer system are there so at the bottom level you, you can see its computer hardware then comes the operating system to facilitate or to complete the tasks then the application programs or the system programs because applications are being executed by the users and then on top of that some n number of users so users execute their application tasks which is which uh, is interpreted or translated to the computer hardware by the operating system as we know some of the components of operating system operating system can be also referred as a resource allocator as well as a control program the reason is that it manages all the resources and then it decides between the conflicting requests for efficient and fair resource use for example an operating system may act as a resource allocator based on the need of the resource say a printer is connected to a computer as well as a some other device is connected to a computer now if a user wants to take some of the prints once giving the execution command say on windows uh, a print of a document is given the operating system will take that information or a request and is going to print the document for the user on the particular resource which in this case is a printer so resource allocation is at that instant of time when a user requests it now it's called as a control program because it also prevents errors and improper use of computer hardware controlling or controlling the execution of program here actually refers to sequencing all the tasks in an order so that once they are completed they they are removed from the queue or it controls the execution in such a manner that though multiple tasks are being executed on the operating system a user will still feel that his or her task is being executed and the result will be given so there is a program named bootstrap program that is loaded at the power up or reboot now this program is stored in rom that is read only memory which is also called as firmware at this point i would say as we all have used windows operating system when we start our machine a few minutes or few seconds of time is taken for the operating system to be loaded before the entire machine starts now here the bootstrap program is loaded 
which is present in the ROM. It loads the operating system kernel and starts execution. Here, the kernel is the core program of operating system that controls the services of operating system. Also can be called as, as operating system is made up of or consists of n number of programs. So, the core program is a kernel and the entire operating system service is controlled by the OS or the operating system kernel. With this, to give a broader glimpse of how computer system is organized, it is seen, it can be seen that say disk, a mouse, a keyboard, a printer, a monitor, they can also be called as resources. Now, a disk is connected to a disk controller. Mouse, keyboard, printer are controlled by a USB controller, say a monitor by a graphics adapter, which in turn pass the information to the memory. So, in this particular diagram, at the three levels, the passing of information can also be seen. Now, what is an interrupt? Basically, an interrupt transfer control to the interrupt service routine through a vector which contains all the addresses of service routine. For example, whenever a request for some service is generated, that is carried forward as an interrupt or that is initiated as an interrupt and service to that request is given. So, what we call it as is an interrupt service routine. Any request refers to an interrupt that, that is initiated and addressing that request is referred as the service to the interrupt is executed. So, at, the, at an abstract level, there is an interrupt architecture which is based on execution of instructions. Then the interrupts can be enabled and disabled at the processor. So, by and large, what we can say here is an operating system is interrupt driven. Now, how is the interrupt handled? So, what we discussed was uh, an basic outline of interrupt service, how it is handled. So, here the operating system preserves the state of CPU by storing the information in register and the program counter. So, the register and the program counter are the elements in the processor that hold the information and they are also part of instruction execution mechanism. So, to know which type of interrupt has occurred, it can be done by polling or vectored interrupt system. So, each polling has a different segment of code and vectored interrupt has a different segment of code based on the type of the interrupt the execution is processed. Then comes the I.O. structure. I.O. refers to input-output structure. After the input-output device is connected, the controlled is, the control returns to the user program. The instruction is sent to the CPU. So, only when that interrupt is executed, 
then the next interrupt is taken. So, it is said at most one IO request is outstanding at a time. Now, it again depends on the type of the operating system that is being used by a user. Now, after the IO starts or the input output operation starts, the control returns to program user without waiting for IO completion. So, that can be done with the help of a system call. So, system call is a request sent to the operating system to allow the user to wait for the input output completion and this IO input output completion is known uh, by some status enabling mechanism uh, which indicate the state of the device whether it is still using the operating system service or it has completed its service requested to operating system. Then is the direct memory access structure. To give an outline of direct memory access structure, the IO devices or the input output devices transmit the information close to the memory speed as we know uh, memory which is also a, a random access memory. So, the information transmission between the IO device and the memory through the processor can be facilitated at a better rate by the DMA that is direct memory access mechanism. There is a device control device controller that transfers the block of data from buffer storage to the main memory without CPU intervention. So, with the help of device controller and less interference of CPU, still the blocks of data from the buffer storage can be transferred to the main memory, which is actually a better utilization of a processor. And this is how DMA is executed. At this point, even an interrupt is generated per block of data rather than one interrupt for per byte. Further discussing the storage structures, the category of storage structures can be categorized into main memory, secondary storage and cache memory primarily the main memory and the secondary memory. So, the main memory here refers to one large storage that the CPU can access directly which is also called as random access memory. And now, it is a volatile memory. A user's information cannot be permanently stored on random access memory. So, the, the random access memory or the RAM what we call it as is used when the processor is in execution or when processor is executing some tasks. Now, coming to secondary storage, it is a non-volatile memory as we all know it can refer to a hard disk, a USB etcetera, where the user's information can be stored permanently. Now, with the time the secondary storage has evolved earlier there were uh, uh, magnetic disks, then floppy disks etcetera, but with time the secondary storage mechanism has evolved into a much faster transmission rate storage devices. Then there is an element called as caching. The cache memory holds the information that is repeatedly used or frequently used by the processor. If an instruction is executed frequently, it is necessarily brought into cache memory of the computer, so that the request is not sent to main memory and main memory can be used for access of any other requests. So, this is how a 
organization of storage structures is done. With this, to conclude, we can have a reflection of what we have discussed as an overview of introduction to operating system. We have, we have come across the components of operating system, the definition of operating system and an overview of each of the components of operating system, their role, their execution and how operating system as a whole is connected and provides its service to all the elements or the components of a computer. With this, thank you.